Hello again, and welcome to Advanced Physics for High School Students. This is Lesson 43, and it is entitled Electric Current, Voltage, Ohm's Law, and Resistance. So far, we've dealt with electricity that has been at rest. That is called electrostatics. We've encountered electrical forces in the form of Coulomb's Law. We've talked about electric fields and the definition of a field being the force divided by the quantity of charge. We've discussed electrons and protons as the particles of positive and negative electricity. And we've talked about electric potential and differences in potential being V, V standing for voltage. And we've discussed that in terms of charges that are not moving relative to each other and you've solved numerical problems with that. What really gets interesting, though, is what happens when those charges are allowed to move around, and in particular, when they can move around a circuit. When we deal with that, we're talking about electrodynamics. I would suggest to you that electrodynamics is one of the central engineering miracles of our modern society, because our society makes great use of electrical energy. Many practical machines, devices, and things are going to be based on what happens when we elect, let electricity move around in a circuit. We're going to come to find out in a later lesson that moving electricity is the source of magnetism, and electromagnetism is a very important topic in physics. Let's remind ourselves of some important facts and then deal with some new concepts in this lesson. One important fact is that the unit of electricity is called the elementary charge. If it is positively charged, that is a proton. If it's negatively charged, it's an electron. And the amount of electricity on a single elementary charge is a number that you ought to know. It ought to be one of your best friends. It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. In a solid conductor, the protons are tied down in the nucleus of atoms, and it is the electrons that are free to roam around. So we're going to see that in solid conductors, when I have charge moving around, it's as a result of the motion of electrons. And we can classify objects into, broadly speaking, two general classes. Those things that allow charge to move, which we call conductors, and those things that prevent charge from moving, which is what we call insulators. Conductors can be solids, like metal wires. They can be liquids, like a solution of sodium chloride or some other aqueous solution that has ions dissolved in it. It could be a gas, say in the form of a plasma. But whatever it is, if it allows easy movement of charge, we call it a conductor. Likewise, an insulator can be solid, liquid, or gas. As long as the charges are not permitted to move in the presence of an electric field, then we say we have an insulator. Now let's go on to some new points. And let's begin with the definition of electric current. Current is going to be symbolized variable with the letter I. Sometimes you'll see it as a capital I, sometimes you'll see it as a lowercase i, and Myself, when I write it, I write it as a lowercase i. Electric current is defined to be charge in motion, and numerically it's the rate at which charge passes a certain point in a circuit or a point in space. In units, charge is measured in coulombs, time is measured in seconds, so an ampere, which is the unit of electric current, is going to be a coulomb per second. Ampere's named after André-Marie Ampere, a Frenchman who studied electricity and magnetism. Sometimes you will hear this abbreviated AMP, such as a 50-amp fuse. This is not an amplifier such as you would play an electric guitar through. This means a unit of current. And in fact, if you look in the circuit breaker box in your house or a fuse box in your automobile, you'll see that electric circuits within this device will be protected by something that will prevent an excess flow of current in a circuit because the current can cause the circuit to overheat if there's too much and that overheating 
can burn the insulation and start a fire. So circuit breakers and fuses are put into electric circuits to help prevent the flow of too much current. So here's a numerical problem for you. The current in a wire was 8 amperes. How many electrons flowed past every point in the wire in 10 seconds? We start with our definition of current. What we're looking for is how many electrons. Well, electrons are charge, so what we're looking for is delta Q. How many electrons? Now what I want to do is I want to put in the numbers. Let's recognize that an ampere is a coulomb per second. And let's also recognize that I have one electron in every 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's the charge on the electron. So now let's put in the numbers. First of all, let's recognize that seconds are going to cancel. And let's recognize that the coulombs are going to cancel. And I'm going to be left with electrons. So let me put the number into my calculator. And I get that 5 times 10 to the 20 electrons is how many pass by this point in the circuit in 10 seconds. Let's move on to the concept of voltage. And we have discussed voltage before. Voltage, we said, is a difference in electric potential. I have a demonstration, a simulation, that I would like to show. This simulation is entitled John Travoltage. And you may recognize an image here of John Travolta, who is an actor who played the Fonz in the old TV show Happy Days. John Travolta has a finger that can touch a doorknob, and he has a foot that can rub against the carpet. And if John rubs against the carpet, electrons are removed from the carpet and distribute themselves all over his body. And now, if John goes and touches the doorknob, there's going to be a difference in potential between him, covered with these electrons, and the doorknob, which is at ground potential, and then you end up with a discharge of the electrons. The electrons have electrostatic energy. That energy comes from the fact that those electrons want to be as far apart from each other as possible. So you can imagine your hand touching a Van de Graaff generator, for instance. And what happens is you have electrons that are delivered all over your body. Now you reach out and touch something. You are at a high electrical potential because work was done when electrons were delivered to you. Oh, looks like that uh, his finger was too close to the doorknob there. Work is done, and the work per charge is called the voltage. So there's work that's done here in order to get these charges onto the object. Now, John Travoltage is at a very high potential. The doorknob here is at ground potential. And there's a difference in potential that forces the electrons to move. So when you think of voltage, what I want you to think of is the concept of electrical pressure. Voltage is defined to be the amount of energy that the charges have per unit charge. In fact, that's the definition of the unit of voltage. It is a volt. A volt is a joule per coulomb. And what causes electricity to move in a circuit is that in two different points of the circuit, there is a difference in the electrical pressure. It's as if there's one part of the circuit that has very high electrical pressure, another part of the circuit has very low electrical pressure, and charges sense that difference in electrical pressure and move in response to it. Now let's be careful about our signs here. We have two types of charge, positive charge and negative charge. And we've seen that it's the negative charge, the electrons that move in solid conductors. High potential part of a circuit is defined to be the place where a positive charge has high electrical pressure and the positive charge will move from the region of high potential to the region of low potential. That sign convention is as a result of a choice that was made by Benjamin Franklin back in the late 1700s. It turns out, with the discovery of the electron by J.J. Thompson in the late 1800s, about 1895 or so, that electrons are the things that actually do the moving in the circuit, 
So the direction that electrons move in the circuit is from regions of low potential to regions of high potential. We're stuck with this sign convention. So now what happens when I have a difference in electrical pressure in a circuit? It turns out that many conductors obey a linear relationship between the amount of current in a circuit and the amount of voltage that's applied to the circuit. This linear relationship is referred to as Ohm's law. This is an important equation. It's one that you're going to use a lot in electricity. It says the amount of current that's in a circuit is equal to the voltage in the circuit divided by the resistance in the circuit. We'll talk about resistance in a moment. Sometimes you're going to see the word voltage replaced by something called electromotive force, or EMF. The symbol for EMF is a script E, kind of a curly Q E. And so you will also see Ohm's law written as I is equal to E divided by R. We will especially come across this symbol, this idea of electromotive force, when we get into magnetism. But E and V mean the same thing. Voltage and electromotive force are the same thing. There are going to be certain circuit symbols that you're going to need to become familiar with. So, for instance, a battery. If you have a single cell, then those cells can be built up into something called a battery, which is t technically a multiple cell device that is a source of electromotive force. The symbol for that is a series of parallel lines, one of which is longer, the other of which is shorter. And you need to know that the longer of these lines are the high potential side of this battery. The shorter of these lines is the low potential side. Wires in the circuit are going to be symbolized by lines. I'm not going to bother to draw that. But resistors in circuits, such as light bulbs or other resistors that do something to the current in the circuit, are going to be symbolized with a squiggly line. You'll see switches in a circuit. The switch can be either open or closed. Basically, a switch is a conductor that will, when it's open, prevent the motion of charges through a circuit, but when it is closed, will permit the motion of charges in a circuit. Let me go back to the resistor for a moment. Sometimes you'll see a resistor represented by a circle in a circuit, say, such as a light bulb. We're going to talk about resistors in more detail in just a moment. But let's do a numerical problem. Example 43.3. A, what is the voltage drop across R1? B, what is the current through R1? And C, what is the current through the battery? Now, in this circuit, they've represent, represented the resistor as a rectangle. and You may see that from time to time. Notice in this circuit that they have indicated the direction of I. And since the direction is indicated here, you can tell that this is the direction of positive charge motion. And in fact, that was something that I probably should have said up in the current section. Whenever we talk about a conventional current, we're talking about the direction that positive charges would move through the circuit. For the AP exam, you should make the, the, the assumption that unless you are explicitly told otherwise, that all currents are conventional. I apologize again for the physics community about the fact that we have this positive charge, negative charge business going on. That is the unfortunate choice of Benjamin Franklin many years ago, but you're not going to change that before the AP exam, and so you just need to get used to it. Now, we want to solve this problem. We see that in this circuit, that I have a battery that is 30 volts. The question says, what is the voltage drop across R1? Well, we make the assumption that our wires are essentially resistanceless. This is an ideal situation. Many of your circuits you're going to find are ideal. And so, whatever electrical pressure is sensed by one side of the resistor, and one side of the battery are going to be essentially the same. So this resistor that is connected to the positive side of the battery is going to be at the same potential as the positive side. 